guys, it's Sarah from Book Nerds and Fangirls, and today I'll be reviewing something different. I just recently watched the new show on the CW called Riverdale, and I must say that it was kind of interesting, but at the same time, I'm gonna need some more convincing. It's kind of, it's kind of like Vampire Diaries for me, at least. At least, like, the first episode was just okay. I didn't think I would continue with the series. So, I'm a little bit on the fence of continuing Riverdale. So, did you guys like it? I would like to know. And should I give it a shot? Uh, I would first, like, start off to say that Riverdale is based off characters from the Archie comic books. I actually didn't know that until one of my coworkers actually pointed that out out to me and I'm like, really? I didn't know that. I just saw it on the CW. I saw saw um like uh chief. I saw this kind of trailer for it. I need a new show because my beloved vampire diaries is coming to an end this year. You're my sad sad day. Uh, the thing I will say that I liked it, I do have a couple things I did like about it, like about it before I get into the recap slash review section of all my reviews that I do, I do, I would like to ha have some side notes. I do appreciate the fact that they got entirely new actors for this show. So, like, the girl who plays Veronica is amazing at acting, and this is her very first job. Like, legitimately, look at her, look at her credits on IMBD, and she legitimately has no credits except this show, and she got cast as one of the head females, and that is how you do it in Hollywood. When you have a gift, a gift people could see it, and this girl definitely had a gift, like, she could be seductive, she could be friendly, she could be a, a bitch, and it was awesome. I, she was totally like the version of Veronica I would love to see, and this is kind of like Archie on crack for me, honestly, because I don't remember the Archie comic books being this dark. This dark. Um, But again, I was a kid when I read it, and I didn't have a very good sense of comprehension, and there are way too many Archie comic books for me to understand what is going on to the plot right there. Right there, at least with this plot, it was easier to get along with. Along with, uh, the cinematography was pretty good in this. Uh, it did have a few really nice shots. Shots, and whoever they got to do the camera work, is pretty amazing at their cinema photography job and good job to them to them also the person that they got for costume design design who designed these costumes is beyond amazing like it's kind of like old classic styles mixed with new modern fashion because it's modern day archie even though archie came out several decades ago and it looks good. It's just, it's mixing. It's kind of like a dedication to me. It's a dedication to the year that RT was published. Published and also a dedication to the nowadays. Which I totally liked. It also involved Josie and the Pussycats. And I'm all like, I like how it's a comic book based, a show based off Archie, but still bringing in some other aspects of the decade that it's trying to go for. I can't remember the decade that RTC came out. Was it the 70s or the 80s? It was one of those. Those. So I really appreciate the modern mixed in with the not so, with the past. It it just like whoever created the show is really genius into mixing contemporary with classic. It's just it's awesome. Awesome, I really appreciate people that can do their job, like, the dream, like, that Mustang at the beginning, that is actually my dream car right there, and I'm all like, I literally wrote down dream car in all caps, 
because it is my dream car. Dream car. I love the close-ups of fashion and shoes in this because the person who does the camera work obviously has a good taste. Taste or cutting in with the fashion. Fashion on this show? Because as soon as Cheryl, like, steps out of the car, you could see her red shoes, and I adored those shoes, and I'm like, whoever is a shoe stylist for this, like, whoever picked out those shoes, I want for my own personal designer, because I, I'm just gonna look this up, I'm gonna look up who the designer is, because whoever it is, pretty amazing team of designers, designers, uh, I actually think I sense hints about Cheryl and her brother Jason having an incest relationship. It just seems like they are a little too buddy-buddy with each other. Like, Jason was the love of my life, and they were holding hands by the dock and going on a boat ride that looked a little more like they were a couple than they were brother and sister, and that part disturbed me. So I really hope she isn't having an incestuous relationship with her brother, because then that would creep me out, and wow, the show would be darker, a lot darker than it already is, because it got pretty dark. Dark. Also, for people who, like, I haven't seen Cole Sprouse in centuries, so I don't really know what character he's playing. I looked on IMBD, and he was the only name I recognized of that list. Because he played on Sweet Life, Zack and Cody, and that was it. <laughs> that was it. Um, okay. And then, you know, there was a woman who we later found out was Betty's mom that said, uh, if he's dead, I hope he suffered. And I'm wondering, it's a little... It's brought up a little later on what he did, and I'm wondering, what did Jason do to make Betty's mom so pissed? <laughs> so pissed. Uh, and then, there's a type, a person who's typing on the board, who I think is Cole Sprouse. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Is it Cole Sprouse? It might be Cole Sprouse. It looked as much like Cole Sprouse as anyone else did. Else did. And then, you know, cut scene to Veronica, and I knew it was Veronica, because Veronica has that really deep black hair, and there wasn't a character who was introduced that had black hair yet. So whenever she stepped in, I'm all like, oh my god, it's Veronica. And the actress who plays her mother actually looks familiar. I haven't really looked up Veronica's mom yet. I was just looking up, like, the main cast of the kid characters and noticing that they didn't- they haven't really done much in the way of acting. Acting like they're fresh new faces. And that's pretty cool. I like that they used fresh new faces. And I loved the fact that the main actors are actually fresh new faces to Hollywood and giving them a chance of their acting skills instead of, you know, their credits. Credits and how many uh, shows they've actually done, because that's really cool to me. Golden me. Uh, and then we cut scene to Betty, because, you know, Betty and Veronica are two of Archie's main love interest. Or are they with each other? I can't remember that comic book to save my life. I, I know the, the, like, uh, the, I know some of it and other stuff, but I don't know all of it. And let me state that whenever... Kevin looked out the window and saw Archie. Archie, I must say that we have a lot of ab shots of Archie. And the guy who plays Archie has, like, the most amazing abs ever. I'm like, okay, I can get down behind this. And we'll talk about the actor who plays Archie a little bit because I have commentary about not the actor himself, but the character, but I do have, like, one comment about the actor, and we'll get to that in my notes, because I have, like, a whole page full of notes that I want to go, pages full of notes that I have to go through, because this is what I do for the very first episode 
episode, I tend to notice things a little bit more because I'm analyzing the episode bit by bit. Bit by bit. And there was a lot of, uh, a lot of ginger jokes in this, I've noticed. There was Kevin who said that he was, uh, like, go ride the ginger bull. And I'm all like, haha, that was actually kind of funny. And then there was Josie, who told, called Archie Ginger McTimberlake. Or, oh no, it was Justin... Ginger Lake, I think it was, and I'm like, there, there's a lot of ginger jokes going on in here, in here, and Archie's not the only ginger in this show, like, the girl who plays, uh, Cheryl is also a ginger, a ginger, so, um, yeah. So, one thing about the comic books that I didn't really know was that Archie likes writing songs, and I didn't really remember the music aspect to Archie, to Archie, nor do I remember the teacher thing, but I was young, so I didn't really get that that was a bad idea to do. Do you when you were younger? So, yeah, I probably didn't even notice it whenever I was skimming in the grocery stores. Stores, because it always looked... looked, um, interesting to me, but can we talk a minute about overused cliches right here? Okay, so I swear this is, like, totally Twilight right here, right here, and yes, I do make a couple of Twilight references in here, I'm sorry, it's gonna happen, gonna happen as soon as I saw, saw the character who plays Archie, I'll tell you what he looked like to me, to me, um, so, like, here it is. Betty and freaking Archie are having a conversation. And then Veronica comes in, and then it turns into slow motion. Slow motion. And I wrote down two things for this, because it reminded me of two things. Two things. One, it reminded me of the overused cliche of when you see a person you think is hot, you tune out. You tune out other people. And, and just watch them. And then, of course, the other overused cliche of the best friend l liking their other best friend, but not telling them until a new love interest enters the field. And I'm just over here like, I feel sorry for Betty, but at the same time, come on, girl, you had like, what? What are they, like 16, 17, maybe? I don't know. Oh, no, that's another overused cliche, I think. Cliche. Also, why I compared it to Twilight is because it reminded me of the first time that Bella laid eyes on Edward. And it was like, oh my god, this guy looks so much like Edward. It's ridiculous. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could see, like... They're taking inspiration for, it's like they're making new stuff, but it also seems like they're taking inspiration from other things, like this uh, creator of, like the person writing it is actually a co-writer of Archie, actually, so I'm like, uh, I don't really like that cliche, but I guess I'll deal with it. Deal with it. And then we have, like, Veronica's mother all stressing her out because because of the first day of school and Veronica, not Veronica, Betty has, it's Betty's first day of school, Betty has to be perfect, Betty's mother always wants her to be perfect because of her sister Polly, and apparently her sister Polly is screwed up because of Jason, and she's like, I don't want you to be like Polly, yada yada. Like the overbearing mother type. And one thing. One thing.
something I noticed. Um, if her name is Betty, why did her prescript? I, I think this was a goof. Like, I seriously think it was a goof on the show, and they totally forgot to remove the name Elizabeth. Because her mother called her Elizabeth Betty at first, but then they called her Elizabeth. Elizabeth, and her pill prescription bottle says Elizabeth. So if her name's Betty, why is it say Elizabeth? Like, I don't remember the Archie comics that well, but it's Elizabeth, like, her real name? I have no clue. No clue. There's no subtle hint about that. I don't know. Don't know. So that's a goof I spotted. Um, also... Hmm. Weird. Also, there's this thing where her mother gives her Adderall to co concentrate. And I can tell you firsthand that Adderall... Because I had ADHD, so I had trouble concentrating too. That Adderall is a horrible drug that gave me suicidal tendencies when I was in third grade. So I'm not a big supporter of Adderall. Adderall. It's fine if it... I'm not the hugest supporter. It didn't work for me. Maybe it works for your kids. I personally just don't like the use of drugging up kids just because they're hyper. Hyper because they're kids, you know? And that's another controversy issue that I could... Well, controversial issue that I could go on days about. But we actually have a lot of things to cover. Cover here. Uh, I think out of all the characters that I saw, I think Kevin and Veronica are my favorite because as soon as Kevin entered the screen and entered the hallway, I swore that he would be my favorite character. Character. Until the fact that he brought up Veronica's dad. And Veronica did a good job defending herself. That's why I like Veronica because she defends herself a lot and she defends others and it was awesome. Awesome. And of course I had talked about... Josie and the Pussycats, and when did they enter the Archie universe? But I guess it's kind of like a crossover between them. I have no clue. And it was just in Ginger Lake, because I wrote it down there. Right there. Uh, and then Veronica tries to get um, information about Archie. Archie, and then he, she asks... I think this is the funniest part of the show, too. She asks... Betty, if her and Archie are a thing, well, something about, are you and Archie dating? And then Betty and Kevin, Kevin and Amber at the same time, Betty's answer was, no, we're just friends. Well, Kevin's like, no, he's straight. And I'm like, that was just a beautiful moment. That is good script writing right there. Skip right here, there, and I'm like, yeah, definitely an in, like, we got to this, and then, uh, it's like, and then Kevin says, well, Betty and Archie are totally like Endgame, and if you guys read the comics, are Betty and Archie really Endgame? Because I know he alternates between Betty and Veronica a lot. A lot. And then she's all like, I, the, br and then we get to Cheryl, who said the brother was her love of her life, and I'm like, yeah, there, there definitely has to be some incest going on, because no one is this close with their brother, I swear. I swear, it was really creepy, and I didn't like that aspect. Aspect. And then we get this slow motion stare, like in Twilight, Twilight, but this time, we find out it's from his teacher, and I'm like, oh my god, okay, um. So, we find out that he had sex with a teacher, which is scandalous. And it's like, oh, so scandalous, I had sex with my teacher, and I'm just like, why, R.D., why? And then... After that, I just put, I almost forgot in the comics that Archie is a tall player. Player. Like, he would fit in well with the players. He, he's just like the ultimate player, isn't he? 
isn't he? Obviously, his teacher regrets having sex with him, like most teachers do. I mean, it's not appropriate to sleep with your students. Students. And then we find out that Veronica and Archie's parents used to date, and I'm wondering if they're going to hook up. Because if they are, that would be awkward because Veronica and Archie are supposed to be a couple in this, in this, like, they're in the comics. So, I'm like, okay. And then we're listening to Archie's music on the table, and there is something about, Veronica said about, what do you, what don't you do? And then I just wrote down, who doesn't he do? Because it looks like. Because he's already got Betty wrapped around his finger. He kissed Veronica at the party, which we'll get to. And he's sleeping with his teacher. Teacher. And whenever the redhead was walking towards the table, I thought he was fucking her too. I'm like, Archie, do you not have enough love interest over here? <laughs> over here, do you have to add Cheryl to the mix too? Dude, what's next? Uh, like... Yeah, her mom, their moms or something. And then, of course, Cheryl and Kevin are super snarky. Snarky. There's something about her, him calling her the rich bitch and the, like, or some, like, other cliche. And he's, she's like, isn't the gay best friend already be, being overused, too? And I'm all like, oh, no, she didn't. Didn't girl this. That does not happen. And then, of course, like, Veronica wants Betty to try out for the cheerleading team. I remember they were cheerleaders, but I didn't think Betty persuaded her to do it. To do it. And then, Veronica calls, like, one huge thing that I hate is when people call people Bay. Bay. So she calls Betty Queen Bay. And I'm all like, did you just call her the queen of shit? Because that's what Bay means. Bay means poop. So basically, she just called... Called, uh, Betty shit. <laughs> shit, because Bay, Bay means shit. It doesn't mean, like, you're totally adorable or something. No, it means shit. Shit. And then we get back to Archie and the teacher, and they're talking about lessons and other stuff. And then... We get to the 4th of July, and it's obvious that they heard a gunshot, so they know about what happened when Jason died. Died, And of course it can't be Archie and the teacher, because they are together. Together, so that, like, totally adds, like, eliminates two people from the equation of who murdered who. Who. And I'm pretty sure the sister murdered him, because who else? would murder Jason. She was in close proximity to him. To him. Uh, if she didn't murder him, and it was because he wouldn't have an incest relationship with her, I totally called that. Called that. Um. And then we get to cheerleading practice, where Betty and Veronica are auditioning. Auditioning. And... <laughs> like, uh... Cheryl tells them, hey, where's the heat? The heat. And then Veronica tells Betty to trust her. Trust her. And then Betty and Veronica kiss. And I'm all like, if they were a... I didn't know if they're canon or not in the comics. But I would totally ship Betty and Veronica together. Like, just leave Archie. You girls could do better fucking... Fucking let him bang his teacher all the way until Tuesday. Whatever. Whatever. And then, Cheryl had to be a bitch and say, Hey, that's never used cliche, and I want... But let's go to the truth section of the thing. And then, she asks... She asks, uh, Betty about her sister, who fucked of her brother, and if that was why her sister is in a mental institution, which you just don't do, I don't care if your brother died or not, or not, that's just no excuse to be 
a bitch to people. I wanted to call her the C-word, but I don't say the C-word on camera, no matter how many times I want to. Want to. And of course, whenever Cheryl is doing this, uh, Betty is not the one to fight back, so what she does is she literally crushes her nails to her hand, and you can see the claw marks in her hand where she is tired of being so perfect, which I'm like, this is a darker Archie. It's definitely darker. Darker, and I actually like that, actually. And then, like, um, first off, Cheryl does not pick Betty for the team and picks Veronica, and Veronica stands up to Cheryl and said, and says, I know who he, what you are, you're a bitch just like I am, because I used to be that person, person, but you know, you do not get me without her, because guess what, you may think you're Queen Bee if you're a little crown around here, but I am Spice, and I will bring your reign of terror down, and I liked that, I like Veronica, and I love her as a character, and she's probably one of my favorite characters in this one so far. So far. And because of that, Betty makes the team because, you know, Veronica had to press Cheryl, which is one of my least favorite characters at the moment, but she's a bitch, so what do I expect? Expect. But then I figured that's why her mother wanted Jason dead because of what happened to her sister. So that got cleared up for me. I appreciate the clearance on that. Thank you. It's like, uh, and then, you know, you know, Betty and Veronica are talking and they're just talking about what happened. Uh, Betty talks about her dad to and who, how she used to, not Betty, Veronica, sorry, I'm gonna get their names confused a little bit, I know Betty is a blonde, and Veronica's the brunette that's hair is so dark, it looks black, like black, but I love their friendship, because Veronica tells Betty about her dad, and the way she used to be before she moved to Riverdale, Riverdale, and she makes a promise to start fresh and other stuff, and not be a bitch like she was back there. And then of course Betty tells her about her sister and went down went down between Jason and her. And it was just a really good friendship moment until they see Archie. Archie and um Of course Betty is a I mean Veronica is supportive of, of Betty to a certain point point to where she wants to help Betty get with Archie. So Betty as Archie to the if he would escort her and Veronica to the dance, and Veronica's wondering why she did that, and she just turns to Veronica and says, "You're new here, and you shouldn't go to your first dance alone, and I won't allow it." And that's why I wrote down that Betty and Veronica are hashtag friendship goals because this is what strong female friendships look like. Look like it is only the first episode episode of the season, and they already have the strongest female friendship between Betty and Veronica, and the actresses, who are brand new actresses, by the way, make it feel so real. So real, and I just love their chemistry together, and it's awesome. And then, of course, uh, we cut scene to Betty dancing in her room, and her mother is upset because she has a cheerleading uniform on, and her mother tells her to take it off, that she won't allow it, and Betty gets a little rebellious, saying, no, I try so hard to be what everyone else wants me to be, and this is the one thing I'm doing for myself, so you know what? I'm staying in cheerleading, and I'm going to the dance with Archie and Veronica, and I'll see you later. Later. And I love that she stands up to her mother, because, you know, her mother seems like one of those controlling mother types, which I'm personally not all for. All for sometimes it works, and sometimes, like these cases, it just doesn't work. And then we 
you get to uh, Veronica's mother over here, and she sees a suitcase that's full of a shit ton of money, and I'm wondering who gave her that money. It's probably Veronica's dad. And I'm like, what is going on here? I have no clue. No clue. I guess we shall see. Shall see. And here's the part where I wrote down what Archie looks like to me. Okay. So, is it me, or does the guy who plays Archie look lo looks like Robert Patterson, who is the guy who plays Edward, and Paul Wesley, who is the guy who plays Steven on The Vampire Diaries, he looks, they look, this guy looks like Steven and Edward came together and had a baby because he has, like, Paul's strong jawline. Jawline for Steven. And he has the Edward hair. And I'm like, this is what happens when Edward and Steven have a love child. Love child, and I swear, I'm not shitting on the two actors who play those two guys, because they're really nice actors in real life. I'm not particularly partial to their characters. Steven really annoys the living shit out of me. If you've watched my Vampire Diaries reviews, reviews, and Edward is just, eh. You know, Edward was Edward. He was a phase when I was a teen, and I got over it. And then, here's another thing. When they enter the dance, and... And, uh... They enter the dance, and Josie and the Pussycats are playing a song. Here's another thing that reminds me of Vampire Diaries. All Through the Night starts playing, and when I hear All Through the Night, other than that, uh, it, I remember whenever Elena first remembers when she loved Damon, and that's all I remember whenever I listen to a song all through the night. Other than that, and I swear that Cheryl and her parents have such a, like, open relationship, because it's a, like, this is the song that me and your dad conceived you and your brother to. And I'm like, why would you tell your child that? That's gross. That's disgusting. No. Just don't. Ugh. It was like, it was, it was gross. I'm not gonna lie. That was disgusting. Disgusting. Um. At first, whenever, like, uh, Betty was propositioning her and... Archie being a power couple. Power couple. He was looking at the teacher for this. And I'm just all over here like, like, please do not use your bet, your supposed best friend in the world to get back at a teacher. Because that would be shitty. And I would not like this character. Not that I liked him to begin with in the comics. Boy, yeah, I would hate him even more. In more, because it's just not cool. Not cool. And then, of course, we all go to the, the dance ends, and then, of course, Cheryl has to wreak havoc. So, she plays, decides to play Seven Minutes in Heaven, and I'm like, that is such an old party game. Party game, but, of course, they're mixing the old and the new, which I kind of like. I like the concept of mixing modern times with with past times. It's actually really cool to me. To me. And must, might I say that even though Cheryl is a complete bitch, I totally and completely fell in love with her after party dress. It was amazing and I just wanted it. I want to know where it's from. I wish, like, if you've uh, been on Born on TV dot com dot net or dot com. I don't remember. They tell you exactly where to get them, and I wish they would do one for Riverdale, cause the fashion in this one, awesome. I just wanna get the look, and you know. <laughs> and 
And I'm just over here, like, saying, I'm not sure I want R2 if anyone at this point, because he's just, like, a total player. He seems like the player that needs to separate himself from girls and figure out what to do with his life, because he uses it, he goes through girls like he goes through condoms, obviously, so. So there's that. Uh, of course, I have to say, I love Veronica's shoes, because I love all the fashion in this. It's a very... Like I said, I applaud the fashion designer because they're amazing. Amazing. And then, of course, Veronica has to ask about Betty. Betty, and he says that he does, just doesn't feel that way for her. And I guess you can't force those feelings. Force those feelings? I know you can't force those feelings. But I feel sorry for Betty because she tried so hard to get Archie to like her. Like her, and then she was all immediately friend zone. And after that, that he kisses Veronica. And there's a lot of heat and chemistry between those two, too. But there's also chemistry between him and Betty. Betty, which I love how they portray a one sided relationship so well in here. I have never seen amateur actors. That were this good. It's good before. And it really surprised me. I really appreciate these actors. Actors. And I swear that the computer guy is close for us. Correct me if I'm wrong. But he has this conversation with the computer guy. And said, I upset Veronica. And he's all like, well, I'm sure whatever. Not Veronica. I'm Betty. And he's all like, I'm sure whatever you said or did to Betty, it could be fixed. Fixed by just talking to her. Just talking to her. So, of course, there is another cliche. Cliche that makes me... It's like... Like, I, I'm okay with cliches, but it seems like this was kind of cliched. Cliche, the whole, uh, I'm not good for you. Good for you and you're so perfect speech. Speech that all the guys give. But her just not saying, I'm sorry, bro, I'm just not interested. All he really has to say to Betty is that, because telling her that she is too perfect makes her want to be rebellious. I know this. I have had this speech before, and it made me more rebellious. Rebellious. So, that boys, if you're listening, please do not use the you're just too perfect speech, because then we think we need to be more rebellious. Rebellious, and if we're fine, just don't say that to us, you know? It's just, it's a rude cliche, and I don't really like it. Really like it. And then, of course, we go back to Kevin and the other guy, who I totally forgot what his name was. Name is, we'll call him Moose, because he said he has the dick of a moose. They call him Moose, but he has the dick of a horse or something like that, which is kind of funny. But he said so they're, like, going down to the river to have sex. To have sex. And then, Kevin trips over Jason's dead body with, of course, a bullet wound in his head. So we know he got shot. Shot. And I'm pretty sure it was his sister who shot him. But they said that there would be an arrest made next episode, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be Archie. Archie, because we need a storyline for this season. But what do you guys think? Did you like this show? Do you think basing this on the Archie comic books were a good idea? And who was your favorite character character and outfit? Because I really want to know who your favorite style was from this. And I will talk to you guys later. And I hope you enjoyed this view. Bye!